Hello and welcome to today's video. So in this one we are going to be unboxing the Gamesir X2 Bluetooth Games Controller for mobile phones. Now we have unboxed previously the one with the lightning connector to work with the iPhones, but it'll be really interesting to see how well this one works, I guess, in comparison and just what it's like in comparison as well. Now I just want to say off the bat, Gamesir kindly sent this one over to us to kind of give our unbiased opinions. They haven't paid us or anything like that, they just provided this so we can unbox it, review it and just talk about our thoughts. I've also brought a very, very dusty Backbone One controller just for comparisons in terms of size and I guess controls as well. So first up, let's unbox this. Now, the great thing about the GameSir controllers are they are a bit more budget friendly than something like the Backbone or I guess the Razer Kishi as well. They normally come in around about £60 or $60 depending where you get them from and they do multiple versions. So there's a Lightning one, a Bluetooth one and there's also a USB Type-C. Aha, and just like their lightning one, it also comes in this funky case, which is this sort of like textured ooh, feel there. There we go. So it's a bit of a hard shell, soft at the same time, but let's see what comes in there. So you've got this like net for all of your extra bits if you want to throw it in there. Let's look at the accessories first. So obviously in this one, I assume you're going to get a charger. Okay, so this is something that we missed last time actually. I don't know if it just didn't come with the version that we had, but it has these um, sort of like rubber grips to go on top. And the reason why that's such a big deal, at least in my opinion, is that I don't like the one, the thumbsticks that it comes with. They're a bit just oddly small and kind of pointed the way they are. So we'll have a look at those soon. Get a GameSir sticker. So pop that aside. A very small <laughs> USB-C cable as well. So obviously that's for charging. Um, I would say one thing, the USB-C cable feels just very, very cheap. You've probably got one kicking about as well that you might want to use instead, because obviously this is very, very small, but pop that aside for now. And I assume this is like a, a warranty card or a quality control card or something, just pop that over. Anything else in there? There's just literature, how to use it and all that jazz. What's that? Oh, okay contact us thing so let's pop that aside for now pop that over there and uh, the one thing I hated about this last time is this Obviously, you're gonna kind of put it in and it's got this elastic thing just to secure it but it's really annoying and gets in the way so pop that over <clears throat> so these I really like them they feel pretty solid the plastic like the last one with the lightning connector does feel I suppose it's very smooth a little bit cheap and light and this always worries me because it is just, it feels like it moves too much. However, it's got a real good grip, it's a good feel, and I really like the layout of it. It fits very, very nicely in the hand. So once your mobile phone's in there, it just kind of all fits nicely. Hitting all the buttons is really easy as well. So on the bottom, USB Type-C for your charging. I'm assuming that is your power as well to power it on. On the back, you've got these sort of like rubberized grips, which are really nice, they feel really good. Um, the good thing about this one is because it's in this like grey colour unlike the white that we had last time. The white gets really dirty, but this at least it won't show up as much. It's slightly raised as well, so it just kind of feels really nice in the hands, very ergonomic to use. On the top you've got your bumpers and your triggers. And these triggers are slightly out, so they're curved as well. Really easy to hit. I don't know if it's as clicky. So the lightning one was really loud. This is loud as well, but I don't think it's as loud. I hope it's something like the backbone. Backbones are very soft. There's this. It's a very kind of loud one. So it is something to consider. I, I always talk about it and I don't think people actually really care. Um, but ultimately for me, if you're using this on like public transport or if you're using it at home, other people might hate you for it. So just consider that. Um, buttons. Feel good. Decent click, they don't feel mushy at all, which is always good. Um, you then got loads of buttons, so I'm assuming that looks like it's a screenshot button. I'm guessing this is like your options. Start and I, I don't know, we'll figure it out when we play some stuff. Uh, so quite a few buttons there. And then these awful joysticks, I really, really don't like them. They've got a good range of movement. They always snap back to the middle. They move nicely. They've got obviously your L3 and R3 clicks which is always nice to have, especially uh, if you're doing any cloud gaming. 
But they just feel harsh on the thumbs. They're kind of the inverse of a lot of controls. So let's pop these on it and see how much of a difference it makes. Because that for me was one of the things I disliked the most about this controller. Well, the lightning one anyway. You can pretty much already tell that this is gonna make a massive difference. So these caps that it comes with in the box, make it miles better. They almost feel, no, that's, yeah, that feels fantastic. I was gonna say it almost felt a little bit too large, but that feels, oh, someone's had a car crash outside my window. Anyway, back to the video. Uh, yeah, so that feel that makes it feel so much better. I wish I'd realized that the lightning one came with it. It might not have, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's good. So inside, you've got this really nice rubberized texture. Now, the great thing about that is it means that when this is going back and forth, your phone's not gonna slip anywhere. You're not gonna scratch it. You've also got these rubberized bumpers on either side. So that's really nice to have. It's got a good range of motion. So I mean, it's going out that far there. So that is huge. It does get a bit loose in the middle if you pull it too far, but I mean, you're gonna fit most devices in there, which is really good. So let's try it with something. Now, unfortunately, overhead cameras are not working, so I am using my iPhone for that. So I've had to bring out the iPad, but that's also a great opportunity to be able to show off one of the good features about this. Yeah, so hopefully it has some charge in it. So one of the great things about this is obviously because it's Bluetooth, you'll be able to use it with your mobile phone, but you'll also be able to use it with things like a tablet or a console if you wanted to, or if you were doing some, I guess, game streaming on a Android TV or anything like that, you're gonna have that functionality with this because you can hook it up via Bluetooth. One of the downsides is if you were doing things like cloud gaming, there is gonna be a little bit of extra latency that comes from using Bluetooth as well. So it's always something to compare, the trade-offs there, but it is a very nice to have. Things like the Backbone one recently got the ability to be able to play through lightning cable to something like an iPad, but it does come as part of the subscription model. Whereas this, because it's Bluetooth, you don't have to worry about any moves like that. So let's pair it up and let's play a little bit of dirt and see if this is working. So it should be. Now the one thing I will say that I disliked about this and I disliked about the last one is the placement of the joystick and the A, X, Y, and B buttons. They're just, because they're lined up almost perfectly, it's a bit of a chore to get it. And I suppose now with this being a little bit larger as well, it's even more in the way. So kind of, you're having to dip your thumb over it. So no controller found. Hmm, okay, right. So it doesn't seem to be working with Stadia. So let's load up xCloud. Okay, so interestingly, it's also not working with xCloud. Okay, so to use a controller to play games that do not support a controller on Apple devices, we need to apparently hold down the G button and the home button. Home button, for anyone who's interested, is this one here. So let's have a look. So the G button, yeah, no games controller found. Right, so there apparently we can, let's try something else. <laughs> While that was updating, I had a look through the instructions a bit more and you can long press the B button and then the home button on the bottom here and it should then put it into Xbox wireless controller mode. Oh, it's flashing purple this time. So it has done something different. So let's have a look. Ah uh, yeah, Xbox wireless controller, so that's interesting. So I wonder if they've got something built into this to trick the device you are just pairing it up with into thinking that this is an Xbox controller. Who needs instructions now? Well, apparently I do, because I didn't know how to do it. Okay, so here we go. So we are now paired up with Cloud Gaming. So if you do have one of these, and you're trying to pair it up with your Cloud Gaming, or just use things that just aren't basically Apple MFI supported, you long press B, and your home button on the bottom, and that'll put it into a different kind of pairing mode, where it'll flash purple instead. Um, and that will then make it think that it's connecting to an Xbox controller. So that's, that's a handy thing to know. I kind of wish it just did that pairing right from the start. But let's just load up a quick game here, see how responsive it is, see how much Bluetooth affects it. So again, I'm in probably the worst room possible for cloud gaming. As you can see there, Stadia is telling me off and my connection isn't fantastic. So we're probably not gonna get the best experience, but I'll at least be able to get a vague idea of how well or how much input lag is coming from this. I don't really know how to play this game. It seems to be, oh, oh no, I've just changed my view instead. 
Oh my god. How do I change my view? Oh, I think that's break. Ah, oh, here we go. This will be better. <clears throat> okay, so I mean, I've got to say, apart from obviously the irritating stuttering I'm getting at the moment on the game, um, because the connection is really poor up here, it's working well. It's responsive, like as a movie. There's a little bit of input lag, as I kind of expect with anything to do with Bluetooth. But it works. Okay, my thumb cap came off, so I don't know if that's just a poorly designed thumb cap or what. Oh, I don't know if I put it on badly. Here we go, so it's on again. Right, just because the connection is quite poor at the moment, I'm going to try something like Minecraft. I did download it, so let's have a look. Now, it'll be interesting to see. Oh, okay, so that works. So one thing to note there, and I don't understand why it doesn't just go into this mode automatically, is that's working, I haven't had to repair it in another mode, which I was just about to say, it'd be interesting to see if that works or not. So, here we go. Let's just see. So that flew off quite easy, but I think I hadn't put it on correctly, so that's not too bad. But something to be, bear in mind is, although it comes with these caps to make these larger, which is a nice to have, they are just caps that go on the top. I almost wish that it came with something maybe you could unscrew the top and screw on larger ones, so that way they'd be a bit more secure. Oh, okay, that's miles better. So just for the overhead camera, so jump, 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 it's literally responding instantly. Um, which is a good sign, so even with, obviously I was doing a bit of Stadia there and a bit of cloud gaming, even though there was some lag there, that was more again because of the connection not being great. And also my kids are watching Netflix downstairs, so it's not ideal. So, yeah, all in all, Responsive, feels pretty comfortable, it's very lightweight, and I do really like that ability to be able to pair it up with another device. So if you do have something like an iPad, you're gonna be able to play it with an Android TV, or if you're gonna be able to play it then with your mobile phone, you can switch between those devices really, really easily. So that is, I suppose, a big win with that. So very first impressions are pretty positive with this, apart from a couple of issues with the fact that I just personally, as a preference, I don't like the smaller thumbsticks. And although it's nice that it's got these adapters, I wish they were a bit more secure because already one came off during playtime. Um, it feels, I guess, a little bit on the cheaper side, but it is a cheaper device, so that's worthwhile bearing in mind. But all this stuff in there to protect your phone, all like these rubber bumpers and everything, are really, really good. They definitely feel secure. They're gonna stop it from scratching. The Bluetooth connection is really good. And as long as you read the instructions and don't just kind of pair it and then hope it's all gonna work, then you're gonna get off to a flying start. It's nice that it's got different types of pairing modes, I suppose, so that way if you have different situations where the controller's not working, you're gonna be able to find a way to make it work. Apart from it being loud, they've got to sort that out. You know, game sir, if you're watching, you've got to do something about these bumpers and triggers. They're so loud. And again, it's a preference thing, but I just can't see, you know, compared to something like this or pretty much any other controller I have ever used, they're really clicky and annoying. And I just think other people around you are going to hate you because of this, so it's definitely worthwhile bearing in mind. But all in all, so far, first impressions are really good. We will have a full review of this coming up in the next week or so after we've had a chance to actually put it for its paces. We'll do some actual decent connected cloud gaming as well just to see how well this works and how much of a difference a Bluetooth version of this makes to something like the connected version through Lightning as well. So make sure you subscribe and come along for that. Hope you've enjoyed that video. If you've got any questions or anything you want us to find out about this device, Throw it down in the comments below. I'll do my best to find out. If you want me to find out, I don't know, how well it connects with a TV and stuff like that, again, throw it down and I'll do my best to find all of that out. But in the meantime, hit that subscribe and like button. Come along for some more cloud gaming content and we'll be back in the future. Bye.